You might know Germany like this. Europe's powerhouse, an efficient economy, a strong, unified democracy that has learned from the darkest chapter of its history. A generous, socially balanced state, a tolerant society. All this is true to a certain extent, but Germany faces significant challenges as it heads towards its federal election in September. It will be a landmark vote deciding who replaces Angela Merkel as chancellor. As the country stands at a crossroads, I want to show you some issues that may not be so obvious, but that cut through this society. Let's call them Germany's hidden cracks. The first crack is a gap in opportunity. Wealth and life chances are not shared equally within German society. Germany is a very wealthy country. An average household here earns around 4,000 euros a month before taxes. That's more than most countries in the world. And Germans have a comfortable lifestyle. In 2019, two thirds of them went on holiday for at least five days at home and abroad. They feel good about it too. Most say they're in a good situation economically. Even for those who are not doing so well, basic needs are covered. There is universal health care and a welfare system that is very generous when compared to the rest of the world. But although Germany is a wealthy society, that wealth is not spread evenly. It's certainly not the most unequal country in Europe, but what's particularly problematic is access to opportunity. Pulling yourself out of poverty is extremely difficult. In the theory, can auch jeder und jede in Deutschland Bundeskanzlerin werden. Aber in der Praxis ist es doch einfach ein wenig schwieriger. Natalia Nepomniaschka's family lived on welfare when she was a child. Despite getting great grades, she was kept off the university track at school. She had to fight her way into academia and now works as a consultant. She also runs a network helping young people find internships and jobs. Wenn man aus irgendeinem Grund besonders resilient ist, sich unglaublich ähm, stark anstrengt, äh, wirklich sehr, sehr viel Gas gibt, natürlich man auch aus einer nicht akademischen, finanzschwachen Familie ähm, schon auch die Chance hat, aufzusteigen, aber es ist eben verdammt schwierig. Äh, uns geht es auch überhaupt nicht darum, dass alle studieren. Es darf, es darf eben nur nicht von der Herkunft abhängen, ob man studiert oder nicht. Schooling is one of the biggest drivers of German inequality. Children's educational opportunities are closely linked to their family background. Do you remember that university track we mentioned earlier? Most children are put on or off it by the time they are teenagers. And it's extremely difficult to change track later. In terms of the educational system, uh, our system is more rigid uh, compared to more or less all other European countries. This uh, has been the case for the last decades, and it did not change much. Though the disadvantaged people are still disadvantaged, and more so in Germany compared to other countries in the educational sector. This unequal start affects people for their entire lives, and even beyond. The OECD's data on income mobility shows that in Germany it can take six generations for low-income families to reach the country's average income. The number of people who are stuck in poverty is increasing. Single mothers, immigrant families and people with low qualifications are at the greatest risk of being poor and staying there. This lack of social mobility has consequences. Those who see little chance of improving things for themselves and their children are less likely to feel that they have a part to play in society. It's uh, most certainly uh, resulting in a disconnect uh, between uh, the people and uh, the rest of our society. People also blame themselves for being unable uh, to perform. So they uh, tend to not leaving their homes anymore. They don't feel ready 
uh, in particular to face a crisis uh, or to uh, face problems or to face a community. Uh, they don't vote anymore. So it's also a huge problem for democracy uh, in large. Another big crack in Germany has to do with racism and identity. This is a pretty diverse country. You may think Germans look like this and like this, but they also look like this. It's one of the most popular destinations in the world for migrants. In 2019, 26% of people living here had an immigrant background. That means at least one foreign parent. Some groups, like the Turkish community, have been here for generations. But many don't accept that Germany is a country of immigration. The question of what it means to be German is a source of debate, argument and even anger. Uh, ich uh, träume in Deutsch, ich denke in Deutsch. Und ich glaube, das macht mich persönlich ziemlich deutsch und auch viele, viele andere Menschen in dieser Stadt ziemlich deutsch, obwohl sie viele vielleicht von den phänotypischen Merkmalen her nicht auch durch Ton deutsch aussehen. Orkan Özdemir is running to be a lawmaker for the center-left Social Democrats in Berlin's state parliament. He campaigns against racism and, as a result, has been hit with a wave of threats and attacks on social media. Mich, um nicht nur zu beschimpfen und zu verunglimpfen, sondern auch mir zu drohen. Das kann natürlich nicht äh, Sinn der Sache sein in einer Demokratie. Und Aber das ist das, was immer mehr äh, Menschen, sogenannte POCs, People of Color, Menschen mit familiärer Einwanderungsgeschichte, äh, die kandidieren, die sich politisch engagieren in diesem Land erleben. It's not just people running for office who face racist attacks. Many black and brown Germans say they face racism every day at work, in school and on the street. The Black Lives Matter protest across the country last year kicked off a renewed debate around what it means to be German. There are many phrases that people use to talk about Germanness. Are you Bio-Deutsch or biologically German? Are you past Deutsch or German just because you have a German passport? Or do you have Migrationshintergrund or migration background? These labels signify different degrees of Germanness. You might have been born in Germany and your parents too, but that doesn't mean that you're accepted as German. Why is this such an issue? I asked a scholar of identity and diversity. It is still in the collective archive of the German mentality that Germanness equals white people. And that, of course, has an um, effect and, and a consequence on the daily life, on the daily life in a hyper-diverse uh, country, because we are a very diverse uh, society. Many conservative commentators would say discussions of identity and racism are overblown and not even necessary. But examples of everyday racism still abound, even on public television. This was in April, a Bavarian comedian in blackface. And a few months earlier, a group of white German comedians, including Thomas Gottschalk, displayed a startling lack of self-awareness when discussing political correctness and racist language. In meiner grundtiefen Verehrung für Jimi Hendrix habe ich mir irgendwann eine schwarze Perücke aufgesetzt, mir, ein, mir eine Bandana gemacht. Ich hatte auch eine Gitarre und die ausgestellten Hosen habe ich sowieso noch. Und, und mit, bin, mit Blackfacing hast und du dich schwarz ja, geschminkt? Ja, aber okay. das war eine, eine tiefe Verneigung vor Jimi Hendrix und nichts anderes. Und ich war in Beverly Hills auf einer Party, wo nur weiße Banker waren. Ich habe zum ersten Mal gewusst, wie sich ein Schwarzer fühlt. Also ich habe da eine richtige, sagen wir mal, Erweckungserlebnis äh, äh, gehabt äh, bei dieser Veranstaltung. These incidents shed light on regular mistakes that are made even on mainstream media. They often exclude relevant people from the conversation and that has consequences does challenge our, our democracy itself. So we better get an, uh, a more inclusive idea of 
the um, understanding of this collective uh, idea of Germanness in a diverse manner and to understand what, what and truly accept what plurality means in our society. Because otherwise, if we follow the old path, then we um, are doomed to get into a clinch of um, not seeing the uh, the rise of the um, extreme right and the rise of the violence. The third crack I want to talk to you about runs physically through this country, dividing it between East and West. It's been more than three decades since Germany's unification. The process is largely seen as a success. From the economy to infrastructure, East and West are much closer today than when they were first joined together. You might know that there are some remaining differences, and one can even be seen from space. This is Berlin in 2013. See the different coloured streetlights in East and West. Canadian astronaut Chris Hatfield took that photo from the International Space Station. It was an amazing artifact of history that I, floating weightless on a spaceship, looking just through a simple optical lens, could actually see decades later the, the evidence of human decision making and human history down on the surface. You don't need to be 200 miles above the Earth. The differences are also clear on the ground. Bei ganz vielen Indikatoren kann man eben sehen, da gibt es noch äh, sozusagen die Umrisse der alten DDR. Das ist schon interessant äh, zu sehen, dass es da so was gibt wie so eine Persistenz von Kultur, also Kultur, die sich offensichtlich auch fortsetzt, wenn das alte System schon längst untergegangen ist. That persistence of culture has helped create a crack in perception of Eastern Germans more than half say they feel like second-class citizens in their own country. And that's according to the government's own report on unification. And a 2018 study showed that a third of Eastern Germans say that the relationship between the two sides hasn't got better since unification. Nearly two-thirds of Western Germans, on the other hand, say the two sides have come closer together. For the Westen is this eigentlich gegessen. Die sagen, wir wissen gar nicht, was jetzt noch das Problem sein soll. Und äh, viele Ostdeutsche sagen, ja, das ist nach wie vor etwas, das müssen wir aufarbeiten. Da gibt es noch äh, Dinge, die stehen als Probleme im Raum. Und äh, mit diesen zwei unterschiedlichen Wahrnehmungen kommt man nicht, <lacht> man nicht so wahnsinnig gut äh, zusammen. The result, the sense of alienation and distrust of government has grown in the East. A study in 2019 showed that only 42% of Eastern Germans believe democracy is the best form of government. This has combined with a higher level of xenophobia in the region to create a huge foothold for the far-right party, the Alternative for Germany or AFD. Its support in the East has helped make it the largest opposition party in the national parliament. We have viele Regionen, wo auch äh, das politisch so ein bisschen kippt in Ostdeutschland, also mit einem, auch einer starken rechtspopulistischen Bewegung, auch mit dem Einwurzeln von äh, rechtsradikalen äh, Strukturen, also in kleineren Gemeinden, im ländlichen Raum, in den Mittelstädten. Und äh, das ist auch sozusagen durchaus auch eine Folge der, des Wiedervereinigungsprozesses, der ja erstmal zu so einer Verohnmächtigung der Ostdeutschen geführt hat. But the crack between East and West may be healing itself, thanks to the Internet generation. These teenagers are part of a school exchange. It started more than 20 years ago to break down prejudices between East and West. But nowadays, teachers find it difficult to tell who is who. Die kleiden sich gleich, die haben die gleichen Interessen. Um, der einzige Unterschied ist der Dialekt. Mehr kann man dazu nicht sagen. Das ist wirklich eine Generation, die zusammengewachsen ist, die also keine Unterschiede mehr macht und sieht. Da haben die sich ähm, Sweatshirts ähm, gemacht mit äh, allen Namen drauf, die beim letzten Austausch dabei waren und laufen damit rum. Also das, das ist schon äh, ein echter Zusammenhalt und wie gesagt, ganz eindeutig, es gibt keine Unterschiede bei den Schülern. These teenagers will be old enough to vote soon. 
then it will be clearer what gaps remain between them. As we head towards this crucial election in September, it's worth looking closely at this country and its contradictions. Germany, a country of enormous wealth where inequality feels built into the system. Germany, a country of immigration where thoughtless racism is common and people talk of different degrees of Germanness. And Germany, a country proudly united, but still, in many ways, deeply divided. These cracks may be hidden, but they are close to the surface, and they will affect how, and even whether, people vote. Whoever takes over after Angela Merkel will have to take meaningful action to tackle them. Allowing them to get deeper and wider could badly damage Germany's position as a leading global democracy.